Hello and welcome to a quick video doing a GCSE Maths uh, breakfast warm-up. Uh, this is for paper one. Uh, this isn't to replace any face-to-face -face with a teacher you might have. Uh, this is just for those that can't get to, to see a teacher. Um, this is uh, ahead of the June 25 series and this is for foundation. Uh, in the link to the in the description uh, you'll find a link to a Google Drive where you can download a copy of the uh, warm-up if you've not already done it and if you find the video useful uh, subscribe if you like and you'll get notified as soon as any other material is dropped. Okay question one convert uh, 0 0.75 into a fraction in its simplest form. Uh, I'm going to start by saying that that is uh, 75 over 100. And they're going to go and cancel down by 25s. Uh, so uh, 25 will go into 75 three times and into 100 four times. So it's going to be 3 over 4. Question 2, right, 57% uh, of the decimal. Uh, so that's 57% means 57 out of 100. So as a decimal, that's just going to be uh, 0 0.57. Question three, round 3.146 to two decimal places. So this is the point I'm rounding to. Uh, the number behind the four is a six. Uh, so it's bigger than five. Uh, so I'm gonna round it up. So that's gonna become 3.15. Question four, find the highest common factor of 18 and uh, 24. Uh, so uh, we'll do this really quickly. Uh, so 18, if I break it down of a factor tree, would be 2 and 9, which would be 3 and 3. And 24, in a similar fashion, I'm going to say is 2 and 12, which is uh, 2 and 6, which is 2 and 3. So the highest common factor is the multiplication of uh, the factors that they have in common. So they have a 2 in common. They have a 3 in common. So my highest common factor is going to be 2 times 3, which would give me 6. Question 5, right, a 3 to the power of 4. Uh, right, 3 to the power of 4 in expanded form and evaluate. So 3 to the power of 4 becomes 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's going to be the expanded form. And then that's going to become 9 times by 9, which would be 81. Right, question six. Uh, divide 48 pounds into the ratio of uh, five to three. Uh, so that means that we've actually got eight parts to the ratio. So I'm going to go 48 divided by eight is going to be equal to six. So I want to times each of these by six. So times six times six. So five times by six would give me 30. And uh, 3 times by 6 would give me 18. I'm just going to include my pound symbols on both of those. And there we go. Question 7. Increase 120 by 15%. So we're going non-calc for this. Uh, so I'm going to say the full amount is equal to 120. So I'm going to break it down like this. 10% is going to be equal to, uh, kind of imagine dividing this by 10, 12. And 5% is going to be equal to half of that, so 6. So if I'm increasing by 15%, I want 115%, which I found by adding those three together. So I'm going to do the same on this side. Uh, so that's going to give me uh, 138. 
question eight a shop reduces a 40 pound item by 25 percent what is the new price uh, so i'm going to break this down exactly the same way as i did in the last question so i'm going to say the full amount is 40 pounds so 50 percent half of it would be 20 so 10 percent is going to be equal to 10. Sorry, I've miswritten there. 25% is going to be equal to 10. Uh, so if I want 75% uh, to reduce something by 25%, I want to do 40 take away 10, which is going to give me 30 pounds. Question nine, a recipe requires 250 grams of flour for four muffins. How much flour is needed for 10 muffins? So I'm gonna uh, use a bit of a ratio here. I'm gonna say that four is gonna be equal to 250 and I wanna get up to 10. So I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna say that two lots is gonna be uh, half of this, 125. So 10 lots is gonna be found by times in that by five. So if I do 125 times by five, that's going to give me 625. And question 10, uh, the number of students in a class increases from 25 to 32. What is the percentage increase? Um, so I'm going to treat it like this. So I'm going to say that the change is going to be 32 uh, minus 25 and I want to divide that by the original amount uh, the original amount was 25 and then I'm going to kind of times it by 100 so that's going to become uh, 8 over 25 times by 100 So I know that uh, 100 divided by 25 is going to be 4. Uh, so I'm just going to go and do 8 times by 4, which would give me 32%. And I should really include the word increase. Well, there technically, as it said, what is the percentage increase? Uh, it's already implying that I'm going to be given the eyeball uh, increase. Right. Uh, question uh, 11. Uh, solve. Uh, 3x plus 5 is equal to 17. So I'm going to start by uh, minusing 5 from both sides. Uh, that would give me 3x has to be equal to 12. I'm then going to divide both sides by 3. And that would give me x is equal to 4. Question 12, expand and simplify. So uh, I'm going to say that x times by x would give me x squared. x times by minus 2 would give me minus 2x. 4 times by x would give me plus 4x. And then 4 times minus 2 would give me minus 8. That's the expand part. Now simplify. These middle two terms can be collected. So that's going to become x squared. Uh, minus, four, uh, minus 2 plus 4 would be plus 2 minus 8 so that's my simplified version so expanded and then simplified right question 13 uh factorize fully uh so this is what we refer to as a difference of two squares because uh x squared is a squared term and 9 is a squared number uh so the difference of two squares means that it's going to go into two brackets uh both of which are going to start with an x or the square root of the first term and then the back number is going to be one's going to be plus one's going to be minus and hence the square root so three and minus three right question 14 make y the subject so i'm going to underline the the term that i'm going to make the subject um and uh it's already a positive term so i'm going to leave it on the left hand side uh so the first thing i want to do is move the two, everything else over to the other side so i'm going to start by moving the 
2x or plus 2x by minusing 2x from both sides. That would give me uh, 5y is equal to 20 minus 2x. And then my second step or final step is going to be divide both sides by 5 to get rid of the times by 5. So that's going to give me y is equal to 20 minus 2x all divided by 5. And that's where I'm going to stop. Question 15, find the nth term of this sequence. Uh, so uh, quite a nice one. We've got common difference here of 5. So it's got to start with a 5n. And then what do we need to do to the term 5 to get to the number 5? Nothing at all. So it is just 5n. Right, question uh, 16. A triangle has angles 60 degrees and 45 degrees. Find the third angle. So this is based around uh, some angle sum of a triangle is 180. Uh, so I want to do 180, take away the two known angles. So 60 plus 45. So that's going to become 180 minus 105, which would just give me 75 degrees. Question 17. A rectangle has a length 8 centimetres and a width of 5 centimetres. Find the area. So for a rectangle, the area is going to be equal to the length times by the width. So that's going to become, in this case, 8 times by 5, which would give us 40. And then it's worth noting the unit here. Because we're times in two lengths together, that unit becomes centimetres squared. Question 18, convert 2.5 metres into centimetres. Well, uh, one metre is the uh, same as 100 centimetres. So 2.5 metres is going to be equal to 250 centimetres. Question 19, uh, a cube has a side length of 4 centimetres. Find the volume. So a cube means all four dimensions are going to be the same. So the volume is going to be equal to 4 cubed, or 4 times 4 times 4. Uh, I'm going to do it like this. That's 4 times 4 is 16, and then times that by 4. I'm trying to times by 4, and it's not, um, I don't want to do a formal uh, multiplication, I can double it twice. Uh, so 16 doubled is 32, 32 doubled is 64. And then uh, like with uh, question 17, uh, our unit for volume, well, we've times the dimension together three times. So it's that dimension cubed. So 64 centimeters cubed. And finally, question 20. The time is uh, 14.25. What time will it be in three hours and 40 minutes later? So uh, if I'm doing a time like this on a non-calc paper, what I will tend to do is I will chunk it. So if I just add on 40 minutes to start with, uh, that time would become... Well, uh, it would be, uh, there are 60 minutes in an hour, so it would be five past the next hour. So that's going to be 15.05. And then I will add my three hours. So uh, 15 plus three is going to be 18.05. Okay, there we go. That's the 20 questions for a warm-up. I uh, hope you found that useful and good luck with your exam.